lot about Carson Wentz. And, man, um, I, I'm not as bullish on him as the national media. So let's bring in someone who, you know, has spent some time covering Wentz in Philly. John McMullen, Eagles insider. John, how are you this morning? Uh, doing well. Thanks for having me, Jason. Yeah, yeah. I uh, loved your stuff uh, on social about what the heck's happening with Carson Wentz. What's going on with the Eagles? I'm just curious. What do you make, John, of this report that Wentz and his coach, Doug Peterson, did not talk for weeks at a time? We're talking like eight, nine, ten weeks of the season. Well, I think there's a literal point to that and a figurative point. I mean, literally, I, I saw them talking. So, I mean, if you want to take it from a literal standpoint, uh, the starting quarterback and a head coach have to talk during a game, uh, in practice, game planning. Now, as far as their personal relationship, uh, that's the part where I think it is legitimate. Uh, and, and certainly there was a fracture there, whatever adjective you want to use. Um, and, yeah, they probably didn't talk outside of business dealing. I, I think it's uh, a bigger issue than that. I, I don't think Carson Wentz was upset uh, with just Doug Peterson. I think that's evident by the fact the Eagles fired him, and he still won it out. So I, I think the bigger crux is the, the draft choice of Jalen Hurts at 53 overall uh, in the 2020 draft. I, I think that's really where it all started. Yet, uh, John, do we know who pushed for Jalen Hurts? Because by all accounts, the GM, Howie Roseman, is just enamored with Wentz. Apparently, someone wrote a story where there's a big carbon, cardboard cutout of Wentz in Howie Roseman's office, uh, featured very prominently. If that's the case, why draft uh, the kid out of Oklahoma, Jalen Hurts? Yeah, well, one, that's not fair. Uh, the cardboard cutout. I, there is sort of all over the Novacare complex and all over every NFL complex, there's pictures of players. Uh, and Howie's uh, office had uh, Carson Wentz or had Carson Wentz. Also had Fletcher Cox, who was even bigger. Uh, so I think that was much ado about nothing. But um, as far as who wanted Jalen Hurts, ultimately I, I, I do think it was – uh, a Jeffrey Laurie, Howie Roseman decision, but, and I called it, at the time, I called it a vacuum pick, and what I meant was it, it looks great on paper, it looks great in the video game, the Eagles called themselves a quarterback factory, you want to add talent, you want to have a cost-effective backup, but it didn't take into account the real-world human effect and the impact it would have on Carson Wentz. And look, Carson is just one court. You see it all over this league. Uh, Deshaun Watson in Houston, Russell Wilson in Seattle, Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, Tom Brady uh, even in Tampa Bay. Quarterbacks are entitled, and they all are. And they're handed things, and they're catered to, and it starts at a young age. And you can see the same thing with Aaron and Jordan Love. You can go back to Brett Favre when they drafted Aaron Rodgers. They don't like that. <laughs> now, now Carson should have fought through it harder and should have uh, said, okay, I'm going to prove something. Uh, that's fair. But I think that's, that was the bigger issue than anything else. Uh, we're talking with John McMullen, Eagles insider. Let me ask you, John, I'll be blunt here. Uh, last 29 games since Wentz signed the extension – 48 turnovers. I know the offensive line has been held together by duct tape and the receivers have continuously being injured and, you know, they missed on Justin Jefferson and drafted Ray Gore. I'm not diving into all that. Can Carson Wentz be fixed in Indy or is he broken? Like, we keep hanging our hat on, well, he could be the guy he was in 2017. There's really no evidence that he's been that guy since 2017. No, there isn't, but I, I think he could be the guy from 2018 to 2019, which was still an above-average quarterback, maybe not an elite quarterback, maybe sort of a, a, a top 10, back end of the top 10, if you have a great supporting cast, maybe 12 or 13, 14, if the supporting cast isn't there. 
I think that's sort of the ceiling. I, I do think the injuries, and not only the torn ACL and the torn LCL, but also the stress fracture in his back is a big injury. And I, honestly, Jason, I think Carson is a guy who relied on his God-given physical gifts and didn't take the other stuff seriously because it came easy for him. Mm. Uh, and by the other stuff, I mean mechanics and fundamentals and footwork. Um, and once he lost what made him special as just this big six foot five athlete, then you don't have that technique and those mechanics to lean back on. I think that's what happened, and that's where the downtick comes from. And he's got to embrace that. He's got to he's got to understand. He's got to work harder at that stuff and and clean up that footwork and become. Uh, just a better fundamental quarterback. All right, let me ask you this, John. Where are you on the Eagles drafting at six? Now, I will give Doug Peterson some credit. If he didn't tank that final game against Washington, they would be drafting ninth out of position for one of the top three quarterbacks. At six, you know, we assume Trevor Lawrence and uh, Zach Wilson will be off the board. Do you see the Eagles going QB at six, or do they trot out – Jalen Hurts this year and not pay a third quarterback given the Wentz dead cap hit? Well, I I do think they have to seriously consider it. Uh, I I think everything comes down to evaluation. But if you think Justin Fields is going to be a superstar, for instance, um, and even if you have to move up, remember you have extra draft capital now from the Carson Wentz trade, um, you have to do it. And I go back to 2016 when Howie Roseman said, when you're up at this point and the Eagles moved up twice, you have to take advantage. And he wasn't, he was talking about the quarterback position. So even though things didn't work out for as long as they would have hoped, they're in that position again. And if they think Justin Fields or even Trey Lance is going to be a superstar, they they have to. Because nothing against Jalen Hurt. Uh, he might turn into a, a competent quarterback. But let's be honest, he was the 53rd pick in the draft. And a lot of people thought he shouldn't have gone that high. So we're not talking about that elite skill level that you're talking about with a Justin Field. You have to seriously think about it. Yeah. You're in that position – I mean, that's a tough one because Dak Prescott, you know, was a mid-round pick, exceeded expectations, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, all those guys. On some level, does it not come down to the coaching? And do you trust Nick Sirianni? Um, He's a young guy. He's done some nice things. But, again, uh, what what, do we trust him to develop Jalen Hurts? Like, it it almost feels like a gap year, if you will, John, for the Eagles where they kind of find out what they got in Hurts and then – you know, reconfigure next year? Because this is an aging team, especially on the offensive line and some other positions. Yeah, no question. They're in the transition. Lori actually used that term. I can start going in. Oh, I think we lost John. Sounds like he was in a car. John McMullen, Eagles insider. Well, good stuff uh, from John. You can follow him on Twitter at... 